All right, Brennan. Yes. You're going to revisit NTG Clarity. That is correct. A company you looked at in the past, um, IT related business. I'll yeah. let you take it away. Yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll take it away here. Um, so yeah, I covered NTG Clarity Networks on the podcast uh, for Jeremy uh, back in October of 2023, while well, the stock then traded at about three and a half cents. Um, and at that time, I indicated that given its low PE multiple, uh, and if it could replicate its growth over the past three years and achieve its uh, its guidance, uh, there was a case to be made that the stock offers investors deep value. And given uh, the strong share price performance, I thought that I would do an update uh, on the stock to see what is driving the price higher. Uh, so NTG Clarity Networks Inc. or NCI on the TSX Venture, uh, currently trading at a price of about 82 cents and has a market cap of uh, around $32 million. Uh, so the company is a digital transformation business uh, providing outsourced software development solutions and proprietary software products to telecom, utilities, uh, enterprise, governments, and finance companies. And the company has offices in Canada, uh, the US, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Oman, and Turkey. Oops, there we go. Um, now, looking at the stock chart here, uh, you can see that the company did a five uh, for one share consolidation in early 2024, uh, reducing the number of issued and outstanding shares from about 188 million uh, to about 37.5 million. Um, so given the stock was at just three and a half cents when I did cover it uh, in October of 2023, Post consolidation, the share price uh, was actually around about 18 cents rather than three and a half cents. Uh, so since then, uh, the stock is up uh, around or over 355 percent. So just looking quickly at the company's um, revenue distribution, uh, about 85% comes from professional services and 15% from products and software. And their professional services include things like IT, software development, and telecom resources, uh, which include things like you know custom software uh, development and system integration, as well as user training. And on the other side, their software products include uh, their NTG apps, uh, or their uh, network inventory system, as well as their NTS uh, for utilities, telecom, and their IT sectors. So looking at the financial results and what has been driving uh, the share price. So this is for Q1 of 2024, uh, for the period ended March 31st, 2024. Now, revenue was up 92% year over year to 11.76 million. And this was primarily due to increasing revenue uh, in Saudi Arabia, uh, or Saudi Arabia, sorry, uh, which is a rapidly growing market in need of technology and software to help meet their growth goals. Uh, net income was up about 274% year over year to 2.3 million, uh, again, due to the increase in revenue. And EPS or earnings per share was about six cents per share, uh, up significantly from, you know, it was about 0 0.004 cents per share in Q1 of 2023. But if we actually take uh, the share consolidation into account, the company did more like three and a half cents per share uh, the same quarter a year ago. So EPS was up more like 70% year over year. Good growth though. And this is what's been driving the stock. So looking at the balance sheet, uh, they have cash of about 500,000, uh, debt and leases were about 7.1 million. And most of the debt is held by a numbered company, which is controlled by the company CEO uh, with an interest rate on the loan being prime plus 2%. And that provides net debt of about 6.54 million and a trailing net debt to EBITDA multiple of about two times. Now, because profitability and revenue have went up, we've seen the net debt to EBITDA multiple come down a bit from the last time I covered the stock when it was about two and a half times. So, you know, if we can extrapolate and we believe that they are going to continue to, um, you know, have these uh, levels of revenue and profitability, uh, this should come down a little bit more in the following quarters as well. So, 
Back in October of 2023, uh, Jeremy provided me with some 2023 revenue projections, which I couldn't specifically find published by the company anywhere. Um, but he quoted uh, that for 2023, they were guiding towards 24 million in revenue and about 4 million in earnings. Uh, and in the fiscal year, the company ended up doing a about 27.7 million in revenue and net income of about 2.3 million. So they beat on the revenue and were shy on the net income side. Now, for 2024, the company anticipates continued strong growth from Saudi Arabia as they continue their digital transformation. And the company is guiding toward 50 million in revenue for the 2024 year, which would be about 80% growth over 2023 and a 10% profit margin, uh, which would provide a forward PE multiple of about 6.2 times. Now, to conclude, the company has shown good growth over the past three years, uh, primarily driven by Saudi Arabia. Now, the stock is trading at a very low forward PE multiple uh, of just about 6.2 times. Um, but this is somewhat expected given the weak track record uh, of the company, as well as you know just exposure to the Middle East. And it is a small company overall. Um, but it's still intriguing, I would say, that forward multiple. Now, the balance sheet is reasonable with net debt to EBITDA of about two times, uh, down, like I said, from two and a half times the last time I covered it. And the share count is much more appealing following you know, the five uh, for one consolidation. Um, if the company can continue to execute on its growth and profitability, there could continue to be you know, value in the stock. But again, due to its lack of track record, tiny size, uh, lack of liquidity and exposure to the Middle East, it is certainly more high risk. Um, but you know, for someone who has a risk appetite, uh, it is intriguing if, again, you believe that the company will be able to grow, you know, not only um, in 2024, uh, but also, you know, into 2025 and beyond. Uh, and that's just something I don't know if I have too, too much confidence in. But again, it's certainly an intriguing story. Yeah, that's six times price to earnings multiple. I mean, it looks it looks attractive on face value, but as you said, it really it does reflect a lot of the risks mm -hmm. of the business. Yeah, yeah, certainly a ton of growth in that last quarter. Really, a massive breakthrough for the business in that quarter. Now, yeah. you know, if they can do that in every quarter going forward, uh, it's a tremendous value. But I don't think they're guiding towards. That that was a you know probably a near term record quarter for the business. I mean, mm -hmm. I, we'll, we can look at it further once again. But um, yeah, it, it, interesting based on that last quarter for sure. Yeah, and like I think like I mean again they're guiding towards you know like fifty million in revenue for twenty twenty four. They did like twenty seven million uh, in twenty twenty three. So you know they're they're looking at good growth here. But again, it's just like I don't. It, it would be interesting. We should book a call with management here just to just to get their opinion. I'll do that, um, and maybe we can talk about it on the podcast as well. Um, but just you know, for further growth, looking beyond, um, and especially if that hits the bottom line in their presentation, yeah, and, talked and the about. nature of the business, contract dr mm -hmm. driven versus recurring, yeah. and and because there is some of the IT providers that also have traditionally have quite low margins, and yeah. uh, you know, you're very contract driven. Uh, you you run out of a contract and suddenly you have a, a couple of weaker quarters uh, and you know the the margins of some of the IT service providers have been a concern for us over the long term so you know those are all the things that we'd have to look into further on NTG yeah and just uh where they're really getting their money from it right now is just Saudi Arabia yeah, it's it the like vast majority line share that's really to do with their vision 2030 which that's where they're yeah. investing in all that tourism it's the golf tour tour which I'm sure Brennan loves Yep. Uh, and a bunch of other things, esports and things like that. They're really investing in tourism, digitalization, and all that. And they're just pouring money into it. But they've already pulled back on a few of like their more ambitious products. The line they've already, if you've seen that, that giant city, they've already pulled back on that scope. So if they so do see, yeah, confirming yeah. the sustainability is what we're exactly. Yeah. Th this would be a minor, minor, minor drop in the bucket for their mm -hmm. spending. So, but if they do start to pull back on a bunch of things, it's, is this sustainable or are they just going to see one day it just cuts off? They're not getting funded anymore. Exactly. Yeah. And they're targeting a profit margin of around 10% uh, on that 50 mm -hmm. million, right? So yeah. yeah, interesting. We'll continue to look at that. And, uh, is it, again, is that net 
profit or is that an EBITDA margin? They say net. They say net profit net profit margin. Again, and like they don't provide adjusted EPS or adjusted net income. So again, I believe yeah. that that'll be IFRS. Yeah. Um, okay. Interesting. Uh, 